Welcome to a lesson on determining area using line integrals. If C is a simply connected piecewise smooth curve with a counterclockwise orientation in the plane region R, then the area of the region bounded by the curve is equal to one half times the line integral of x dy minus y dx along curve C. And this is actually an application from Green's theorem. So let's take a look at where this formula comes from. We should now know Green's theorem stated here in red. And we should also remember from our studies of double integrals that the double integral over the region R integrated with respects to A would give us the area of region R. So what we're gonna do here is look at a special case of Green's theorem when this difference here is equal to one. And then we'll write this double integral here as a line integral in differential form. So if our vector field F has components little f and little g, then if we let f equal negative y over two and g equal x over two, then the partial derivative of g with respects to x would be positive one half, and the partial derivative of f with respects to y would be negative one half, and that would give us the integrand of one because we'd have one half minus negative one half. So if we use these functions and write the line integral in differential form, f dx would be negative one half y dx and g dy would be one half x dy. So now if we factor out the one half and then put the positive differential first, we'd have x dy minus y dx. And this is the line integral that will give us the area of the region as long as it satisfies the conditions of Green's theorem. Let's take a look at our example. We want to determine the area of the ellipse given below using a line integral. Notice how the orientation is counterclockwise. The curve is smooth, continuous, and connected. And the equation of our path is x squared divided by 16 plus y squared divided by four is equal to one. So to set up this line integral, we're to parameterize our curve in terms of t and then perform substitutions for x dy and y dx. So looking at our equation of the ellipse, if we let x equal four cosine t, and y equal two sine t, we would satisfy the equation of the curve. So this also tells us that dx would be equal to negative four sine dt, and that dy would be equal to two cosine t dt. So we can use all of this to perform substitution into our line integral. So the area of this region would be equal to one half times the line integral of x dy, that's gonna give us four cosine t times dy, which is two cosine t dt. I'm gonna go ahead and put the dt out here. Minus y, which is two sine t, times dx, which is negative four sine t. And our limits of integration in terms of t would be from zero all the way to two pi. Looks like we'll have eight cosine squared t plus eight sine squared t as our integrand. So let's go ahead and evaluate that. So if we factor out the eight, we're gonna have cosine squared t plus sine squared t, that's equal to one. So this simplifies nicely. So this is gonna be eight t times one half, that's four t. So we're gonna have four times two pi, that's eight pi, minus zero. So the area of that ellipse would be eight pi. Let's go back and take a look at that. Remember the geometric formula to determine the area of ellipse is a times b times pi. Well, a is equal to four and b is equal to two. So that verifies our area should be eight pi 
which is what we found using a line integral. And that'll do it for this video. Thank you for watching.